If you're using Postgres partitioning, you might want to watch out for this one. You see, guys, Postgres partitioning is this capability that allows you to horizontally slice your large table and effectively put them into multiple partitions or just literally multiple tables. The, the difference between creating your own tables and partitioning is just... Uh, it is still presented to you as one logical table and it's hiding the the fact that it's actually multiple tables and the beauty of this is when you do a partition key you can specify based on your where clause uh, that key and postgres will immediately know exactly which partition to hit so it doesn't really scan all the partitions just scan one or two partition depends on what you're trying to do so and instead of working with massive table with billions of rows, you work with a smaller table with maybe millions of rows, like a little bit smaller, tens of thousands. And the smaller the table, the smaller the indexes, the faster the queries. That's, that's the rule we talked about always. I talk about it in my course, right? My database course. It's the best way to work with a billion row table is to avoid working with a billion rows. You take as much as possible you do absolutely everything you can to avoid touching billion rows you work with smaller thing and that's basically that's the the idea of indexing really right we take shortcuts like okay let's skip this branch let's skip this branch so we can directly hit what we want but partitioning has a price and this is something i never knew before again this is only postgres and Kyle Haley, he's a really experienced DBA, has been working in this industry for over maybe 20 years, since 1984. So he has like 13 years of experience in Oracle and other, he worked with other companies, you know. His new startup, uh, they're using Postgres and he's been blogging about the some of the pains of Postgres. I know I talk a lot of good thing about Postgres in this channel, but nothing is uh, nothing is without you know limitations and uh, it's good to actually understand these limitations and see if there are solutions for them and the good news is there is most of these i would say bugs if you will issues not silly bugs has been fixed and addressed in newer version of postgres how about we actually go into this article and discuss it in detail this is fascinating stuff. I love this. Uh, I absolutely love this stuff. Let's jump into it. All right. This comes from Kyle Haley's blog uh, titled Postgres Partition Pains Lock Manager Waits. I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm going to read some blurbs and, and kind of add my commentary to this article. I'm going to reference this article in the in the show notes below. Uh, of course, this episode is available on both in podcast form and on YouTube, so you can listen to it if you prefer, prefer the, if you prefer the podcast form. So let's get started. So uh, the blog starts with showing some charts about a degradation of query performance application retries and failures and essentially waits and errors right? and usually when you when you see that you freak out right <laughs> there's like a failures and and waits and right? if queries are are waiting and and uh, essentially uh, causing other queries to wait and um, failures at the application level debugging and logging that's when when basically things are going wrong at the database so it's showing some chart at it started at this particular point and he's adding a very nice summary of what happened so let's read that summary in the above chart our production system hit the wall by a blind siding pile up on a lock manager weight he doesn't explain what a lock manager is neither did he know what a lock manager was when he when he encountered that, neither did I, to be honest. I don't know what a lock manager is, right? And causing the application, I'm gonna, we're going to explain all of that. We're causing the application to start hitting 1,000 errors a second. That's just nuts, right? I managed to mitigate the pileup by detaching seven partitions for the core table. So he, now he's explaining that 
I was using partitions, right? But there's like a story to all of that. So the partitioning is already there. So he solved that by detaching partitioning. But what is the problem? Really? And he goes into, you know, painstakingly good details. I absolutely love, uh, I just recently discovered him, to be honest. And I, and I absolutely love the way he goes into the details so now he's saying he's like look at this like picture this you're an experienced gray beard database administrator walking into one of the most buzzed about an innovative startup you're into ticket your depth experience so he is really experienced he has like what over 20 years maybe more you know in, in database you know administrations so people rely on that for the database stuff right and uh, i like how humble he is here you know and i absolutely like this He's not, he's not afraid to call himself out for not getting this, right? So he, now he discovered the database, like this startup is using Postgres, and we're talking 8 terabyte with, this database is 8 terabyte in size, with 10,000 queries per second, he's describing the workload, and 10 million new records added daily, each receiving an average of three updates. Ugh, you know, so... 10 million rows and each one receiving an update. So you're talking 30 million tuples effectively, right? Because that uh, updates in Postgres is actually an insert, right? Managing, managing this is not small feat and uh, this is where the experience comes in. I want to jump into where he actually talked about this is the orders table. This is the massive table where things go in, right? And there was a problem with this large order table. This is pre-partitioning, right? So this table became so large that vacuuming started to stall, and, you know, queries getting started to slow down. And as a result, as a, you know, naturally, you partition this table into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller table. Now you can make strategy. What do you partition with, right? And one, the strategy that he initially picked was to partition by day. So by date, the order date, but to partition by day. So every table, every day you get a new table. So that's what it's like, because, hey, it's a 10 million rows. It's like 10 million a table. That's, that's a nice, right? I would have done the same thing to be honest. Like, okay, 10 million a table, let's do that. All right. So. He started doing, here's another complete blog. I'm going to reference it as well. He's referencing it to say, hey, this is where we did the work. We moved from a single table to a partitioned by day, right? So every day there is a new table added. So think about how many tables this instance has now. And instead of one big table, now we have smaller and smaller table, but a lot of them, right? And there is a partitioning. So it's still looking at the orders table, but behind the scene, it's, it's essentially... Um, it's essentially partitioned, right? Cool. All right. So they did do this work. Everything was happy. Everything was good. They saw great performance, you know? So they did the conversion on April 1st, 2023. This is where they did it. April 1st, they did it. Everything was going smoothly. And Zaki like, didn't pay, pay him attention. They, he saw like a little bit of spike up and it was so tiny. He didn't really zoom in to, to take a look. At May 6th, to be exact, 2023, right? The database began to experience severe lock manager waits. That's when the client started to feel it. That's why the user started to feel it. You only, you, I mean, yeah, you can have all the chart and monitoring you have, right? But all, the real, real production is like you only really take a look, really deep look, when something is affecting the users. So when I click a button or I submit something and the backend application struggles to process this because of another backend request to the data store, in this case Postgres, then you start to notice, right? okay, let's take a look at the database. And there it is, May 6, lock manager waits. Like what is lock manager? It's marked a sudden change from a smooth operation we've, we've seen since the part partition conversion on April 1st. The primary function of the database, the work queue operation, started to stall so he's showing a, a graph here for the lock manager weights by sessions and you can see that there are weights started to pile up right 
and especially in May 6th, that weight started to really show. There was something, but it's barely noticeable, was barely noticeable, right? So, and then he's like comparing it with the application errors. So it's like matching up. That's how we, that's how you do basically forensics now. He's doing DBA forensics. You don't see really much details until you do log scale, right? So log scale basically scales your chart so you can see everything. And there it is. When did this happen? The real thing that started to happen is actually on April 11, they started to see these weights, right? It's not as much as May 6, but April 11 is where it started. So a mere 10 days. Remember what happened? April 1st, they started partitioning. Every day they add a new table, remember, right? Every table is a 10 million row table. That's the average here, right? So, so let's read this part. That's what I'm interested in. When we examine the log manager weight on a logarithmic scale, it becomes apparent that these weights actually commence on April 11, a mere 10 days after the partition conversion. This suggests that once we hit 12 partitions, including all data in, in one of the partition, so a total of 12, and then a partition for each day, the database began to struggle with managing the volume of lock requests. No? I'm going to need to talk about lock request here with each partition having 22 indexes so this this is the first time i think he mentions how many indexes right or i mentioned it, maybe he did so the table has 22 indexes that's a lot of indexes but they are necessary of course for for the business but when you partition you don't have just normal 22 indexes anymore you have 22 index pair partition because it's just another table right so you still need these indexes on every single partition so now remember let's talk about locks a little bit uh, when you do an a select on a table on postgres at least or insert or update you acquire essentially two types of locks something called the table lock and something called the row locks and the table lock or the relation lock, when you do a select, you do something called, we acquire something called access share, uh, access share lock. It's a very weak lock. It doesn't do anything. It just acquires it such that to tell the lock manager, such that to tell the, who, the database, hey, someone is selecting something from this table. It doesn't care what, right? Just say, this table is being selected by this process. And if you know Postgres, each connection made to Postgres creates a new backend process. So it's like a one-to-one -one thing. And that's a whole discussion uh, in, in, uh, in a neat recent thread to, for Postgres to move from processes to threads. That's a whole different thing, you know, a discussion. So it's a heavyweight operation to process versus thread. So we have processes. So every connection creates a process. So, and every process, if it queries anything, any table, touches any table in a transaction, right? It, it, create, it gets this table lock, right? So if you select, you get this access share lock. It's a very simple lock. Why? Because we want to know that someone is selecting to block other things, such as DDLs. You can't do a DDL if you're selecting. We don't let you because those are conflicting logs. I talked about that in another video. I'm going to reference it there uh, here uh, to learn if you want to learn more about it. But there's you need to have these conflicting logs, right? So there are certain table logs that conflict with each other. Some are they do not conflict, right? So while you select, you can still insert, you can still update. That's fine. Okay? And we also acquire raw locks that I'm not going to talk about uh, uh, for update locks. When you do an insert or you do an update, we do an a for update lock at the row level. But we're here we're talking only about the table level locks and also index <laughs> locks. So when we do that, we acquire, let's do it just a select, right? Select acquires that table lock. If you do an insert, update, or delete, we acquire, I think called row exclusive lock that's while it's confusing that's actually a table lock right row exclusive lock is actually a table lock it's just called draw exclusive right but that is another type of lock and it's a table lock 
So that's that has to be an entry that says, hey, I am acquiring this lock. I am acquiring this lock. Can you imagine the cost of this locking? So you need a lock manager to manage all of this thing. All of this stored is stored in a table called Postgre uh, the Postgres locks table. And there's a post, the lock manager manage all this stuff. You can see that it's not cheap to manage many, many, many locks. So let's go back to the article. See here, each partition having 22 indexes querying the order step, just, just querying, forget about editing, just querying because querying is a select. Select is an access share lock, right? So just querying, you get 20, 220 locks per query. Why? How do they get that? Because you have 22 indexes, right? And for each partition, uh, each partition has 22 index. Not only you get a lock on the table itself, you also get a lock on the indexes as well. Access share lock on the indexes. Yes, because an index technically is also a relation, right? In Postgres, everything is a relation. So you have 10 times 22 indexes. I think he missed to include also the, the partition itself. So technically it should be 22 uh, plus one. So 23 times 10, right? Really, that's, that's how it should be because you want to also include the table itself, the partition itself. So it's actually 230. And that's why he said two, 220 plus. Right, and it's ten partition because every day they are adding a new partition. That's there is a. Can you do it like automatically, or it has to be a script that does it, right, to automatically add a partition? So fast forward again, they didn't notice that, but again, when you get a lot of queries, you get all of this stuff. You might say, Hussein, we're querying. Okay, sure, we're querying the order table. If you query the entire table, you get 220, 230 logs, right? Because you're scanning all the partition. But what if I select one row? Here is where a performance degradation in Postgres version 13, which is what they are on, right? exists. If you are querying even a single order on a specific date, let's say I want to pick Give me the order on this day. That, that's it. Just give me that order on the day. Postgres still, unfortunately, creates a lock, which is the table lock, access share lock, on all the partitions. Yes, this is really bad. That just exacerbates the problem. That's why he, he mentions that at the end of the block. Fortunately, it's, a, it's something has been fixed in Postgres 14. Uh, it's not mentioned anywhere that I can find. I actually had to uh i have to verify it myself and install postgres 13 and compare it to postgres 14 and there it is <laughs> i query one partition all the partitions are are gets this lock so what's the problem with this so many locks creates contention so fast forward 40 days later and the lock manager weights had become a significant part of the total weight at this part at this point we had 40 partition now you times 22 times 22 10, 23 if you add then you have what 880 locks per query despite my effort to explicitly limit queries to specific partition ranges the database continued to enforce locks on every partition and that is i wouldn't i don't want to call it a bug i think it was by design because when you query they still need to look at the other tape partitions Postgres 14, they optimize that not to do that. That's my thing. That's how I think about it. I don't know if I call it a bug, to be honest. Maybe you can disagree with me. He's sharing the same thought I had here. Upon initially partitioning the orders table, my apprehension centered on the potential issue of, incre of an increasing number of partitions with parse and execution time prog progressively lengthening. I had anticipated a slow or gradual increase in latencies. I certainly did not foresee the database hitting an abrupt wall. That's a wall, actually. You have a lot of partitions. It's okay, as we scan the partition, as we figure out which partition to scan, we're going to hit a little bit of a latency, but I didn't really know that we're going to hit it so quick 
and 40 day 40 days after that right and now he's sharing queries like okay how to find out all the locks how to find out all the other stuff like i'm gonna describe part of this knowing what a lock manager is has a google re a google search didn't really turn up much stuff but there was something called fast path and i want to talk about that a little bit you know you see i'm gonna summarize this a little bit and then we we'll skip skipping a little bit fast path fast path locking is locking that doesn't use the lock manager essentially and as a back-end process which is you think of it as a connection you get 16 of those and essentially what we use we use like an in-memory data structure like a tiny in-memory data structure a part of the lock manager and there is a hard-coded literally a hard-coded i wish i can have it i think i have it here maybe actually do here's the source code um, for those listening i'm looking at file in postgres proc.h and there is a constant called fp underscore lock underscore slots underscore pair underscore back end and that constant is 16 so it's it's not configurable at all it's a you have to recompile postgres to change it and so you can get 16 fast locks what does that mean it means once you hit that 16 table relation which is whether indexes or tables you're stuck that's it you're now out of your slots of the fast path now you have to switch to this slow path i suppose which is using the lock manager right if you use the lock manager then you're just basically fighting with mutexes you know because it's like how, how do you guarantee shared memory access right with with this it's like you're contending a lot of processes are contending on these uh shared resource which is the lock manager and that's where problems start to happen if we acquire a lot of locks problems happen and here's your he's showing a query how to actually see if you're in the fast path or 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 the not of the fa fast path essentially and it's a, it's a, in the pg lock it's literally a boolean fast path true or false and it's per process it will tell you that okay this lock has acquired has been acquired with with fast pass fast pass what's that isn't, isn't that the the road thingy <laughs> fast pass not fast pass like mag genie the disney magic genie right the fast uh, lightning lane <laughs> oh so fast path right or the lock manager essentially so every lock entry you see you can know if it's uh, has acquired by the fast path or the slow path essentially pair process which is a back-end process and guess what not only that you you're essentially other processes can acquire locks as well right like the vacuum when you do vacuum and you also acquire lock but that's another another count essentially right it's just, it has its own count per process i don't think uh that counts against the fast path the vacuum auto vacuum may have a different counter for fast path i might be wrong there and then he goes it goes into like okay how how did i find about this it goes through the source code the only solution is to actually read the source code to learn about this and um, so yeah if you have a lot of partitions a lot of tables essentially and and your process is reading many 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 tables then be wary of this especially if you have long transactions if you like if you do a transaction and you commit quick query and commit you release those lock so it's like what do i do he's like what do i do right solution is like okay time to move from daily partitions to weekly because he just learned that hey <laughs> daily part having a lot of partitions is a bad idea because of this so he moved from daily to weekly so now he has 100 million rows per partition instead of 10. Well, let's say 700, 770 million. Seven, a week has seven days, right? And we, so he started, what, what, what do you want to do? Like, let's, just, let's just start moving stuff. So he had problems moving data because he wanted to move seven tables into one. And even that created more contention. Because now he's inserting and creating more locks he's just been locking himself and he'd been in call left and right and so so nothing went right essentially for him at all 
and also a very good important point here is when he was moving the seven partitions into one weekly uh, or inserting right remember we have what we have essentially 22 indexes so what he said okay oh let me drop these indexes so inserts are faster because you have to maintain index management it's like ah, i don't i don't need indexes let me it's, it's a new table anyway so let me just drop it by dropping the index he created an access exclusive lock which essentially created a lock on the, on that table i don't think that query be uh, that table was not queried actively there but the fact that he's dropping the index essentially created more problems for him because now locking contention started to happen more locking and more locking when you drop an index essentially what happened is the the full table is is locked as a, as an exclusive right unless you use concurrently which i don't believe he did there for other reasons as well right so it is really interesting when you when you actually into the in the mix of actually doing something right everything goes wrong and this is exactly what happened back to the video oh look at that they are using nginx as a as a gateway so it's this is where it says like gateway errors which is nginx uses the back end the back end returns a gateway error and the back end talks to the database and that's where the wait's happening right so what he started to do is essentially all right let's now okay we moved things to the to the we to the weekly now let's let's start to detach the partitions another problem happened detach essentially to detach this daily partition because you don't longer need them right you need to remove them and to detach these daily partitions postgres actually uh, considered this a ddl because you're doing an alter table detach right and when you do that it's a ddl what does a ddl do it acquires an access exclusive this is the most aggressive lock it's not a weak lock like the other types, right? So we we talked about like weak locks or can be candidate for fast path, right? Only the weak locks, by the way. I, I don't I don't think I mentioned that, right? Which is the weak locks are things that you acquire in insert, update, delete, and select. That's basically it. I think also other operations. Maybe the auto vacuum also is a weak lock. I might be wrong there, but but access exclusive is the most aggressive one it's like doing a vacuum full not a vacuum a vacuum full or an a drop table detached partition is also an access exclusive so ugh. so just by doing that he actually blocks by doing that you blocked essentially selects too you can even select from the ta from other tables the parent table gets, uh, I think, when you detach it, you get an access exclusive on the parent table. So the order table became completely inaccessible. It's like, oh my God, that's even just skyrocketed the, the weights even more and more. <laughs> so, and guess what? In Postgres 14, there is a fix for this called uh, detach concurrently, which uh, acquires as a software lock which allows you to continue to edit essentially right? and that's and that's basically the problem yeah so this is my tool that i wrote to actually show all the postgres locks and what conflicts with what right so uh there if you scroll down you will see that uh detach partition there is detach partition and there is detached partition concurrently. If you click on detached partition, it acquires an access exclusive lock. And look what it blocks. It blocks command conflicting with alter table detached partition. Pretty much everything. <laughs> select, select for update, insert. You cannot do anything when you do a, a, a detached partition. But if you do it concurrently, you can... Uh, the only thing you are allowed to do a select you are allowed to do an insert you're allowed to do update delete but you can't do like normal vacuums are blocked right uh, re-index is blocked when you do that so 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 it's slightly a softer kind of lock with concurrently but he can't do that anyway because he's on postgres 13 and postgres 14 added that concurrently feature right again i, I didn't see that option in the feature matrix for some reason but I noticed it in the doc. So it's like, okay, concurrently is available here, but it's not available in 13. So that's uh, pretty neat. He included like, he's like, okay, I had to kill some 
processes to move forward and now now that he moved to weekly he knows he's gonna hit it again in four to six months as the partition more partitions uh as more partitions start to to accumulate right? one option is upgrading to pg-14 where apparent apparently is misspelled apparently if i have a predicate filter limiting to query to one partition then it will only take locks out of that partition uh, it will only lock that table when i say lock the table it will not like prevent editing or anything it's just creates that soft weak locks as we talked about it right <laughs> only on that table like right that's what I you what that's what I thought too. When I query that partition, I only you should only lock only that partition. But no, Postgres 13 and be, before it locks all the partition and that creates more and more locks. So there is more management for locking. So locking is nasty when it comes to this stuff. One one, one thing I think I mentioned him on Twitter uh for this concurrently thing. It's not, it's not in the blog, but essentially you, you you could have also detached partition concurrently in Postgres 14 as well. And and that also will allow you to kind of, will not kind of stop everything, right? It will just, uh, uh, it will allow you to continue editing at least and querying, right? You won't be dead in the wall. So yeah, I absolutely loved this blog. I'll, I'm going to share it below for you guys but yeah i learned a lot about this to be honest right postgres partitioning just watch out for it and if you're on postgres 14 or later you should be fine right it's, it's not as problematic as postgres 13 but man this is really interesting right i don't know what other problems might be there but yeah just uh thought i'll i'll, I'll talk about that a little bit see you